I look at everything in terms of, well, not everything, but I look at some things in, in terms of attack vectors and attack surface areas. So, um, I'll come on to pot splits later. So, if I'll put, drag this up. So, you have your pot. Let's say that's your pot. And then you also have, you know, crypto, right? Now, okay, let's go ignore that. Let's look at a crypto. Here we have two cryptos, A and B. Which crypto has the biggest attack surface area? Sorry, I've lost all of your pretty faces. I can't see you. A. A, yeah. A has a much larger attack surface area. We have crypto C now. Which crypto has a larger attack surface area? C. Yeah, quite probably C. I mean, this would be like the Norway of crypto. <laughs> I think Norway is one of the largest uh, surf like coastlines in the world because of all the fjords and whatnot. Now, your the attack surface area of your own crypto portfolio is pretty de determined on which which crypto you have in your pot, right? So if your if your crypto pot is filled with shit like either massive attack surface area coins like this or massive you know starfish type coins like that guess what your your portfolio is is going to have a very high attack surface area as in the probability or the risk of ruin of your potential of your, of your crypto portfolio is largely increased because you've chosen to have some shit coins in your portfolio if that makes sense so if your entire portfolio is full of shit coins and memes like the stupid Murad's meme super cycle, you're asking to get punched in the balls and the face at the same time. A bull punch face. Bull face punch, I don't know, whatever. So, and then I was starting to think, okay, well, if I was going to try and graphically represent BitTensor, what, what on earth would that look like in, ter in terms of attack surface area? And so I've had a long thought, think about this, and I think BitTensor, for, for, for comparison, let's say Bitcoin is that in terms of attack surface area. Um, it is solid as a nut, um, a metal nut. So I think BitTensor is like this. Obviously, it's not as good as Bitcoin, but it's like it's like a it's it's like the fruit. It's like the nut of a fruit. It's like but around it is this, as much as I hate to admit it. So it's a bit like a lychee of some sort. So <clears throat> the core code of BitTensor is solid. Just like we saw with the, with the hackings a couple of months ago. Uh, OpenTensor wasn't hacked, the core code wasn't hacked, um, the, chain, the, the core chain wasn't hacked or, or, or stopped. It was the stuff surrounding it. So with BitTensor, as you can imagine, there are several layers to it. Um, so actually it's probably a bit like this. So the core stuff, which that that's solid, but all of this fruity stuff around it are the subnets. So at the moment we have 52 subnets all firing live. Um, pretty soon we're gonna have 64 live subnets. And this time next year, we could have north of a thousand subnets, right? Each of these subnets are individual AI startups, aren't they? So they're completely, you know, and, and you have no idea of the cybersecurity measures and protocols that they have behind doors. For all we know, one of these subnets could be running everything on a Google Sheet, you know, or or saving their passwords on on Google Keep Notes or I, I don't know, Evernote, whatever. We, we just don't know. So there is going to be many attack vectors, many, many different attack vectors into BitTensor. And the attack surface area is huge regarding the subnets. So my prediction is that over the next 12 months, there will be subnet hacks.
but don't worry. As long as the core code is intact, in, intact, that's fine. If a subnet gets hacked, yeah, who cares? They'll just be deregistered. Everyone will patch things over and we move on just like we have done. So, because, yeah, I, I spent a long time really thinking, you know, i got to check myself before I wreck myself. Like, how am I going to shit the... Am I going to shit the bed in front of everyone? <laughs> um, so I put a lot of thought into this. And, I, and I've come... This is my long-considered opinion. I, I don't think BitTensor is risky. Um, the subnets will get hacked. But it doesn't mean anything. So the, the equivalent of this is... Remember, BitTensor has created a brand new virgin landscape where people can build apps on top of it, right? Just like Ethereum. Ethereum created the ERC20 protocol, so any one of us could set up a crypto right now on ERC20 and be fine. If our new project gets hacked, does that mean Ethereum is buggered? No, it doesn't. It just means someone got hacked, uh, as in a project on an ERC20 project got hacked. It's got nothing to do with Ethereum. Does that make sense? I just want to make that very clear distinction because I don't think people on Twitter will, will really understand that distinction. So, it makes sense. Yeah. it's also a good buying opportunity, sort of almost certainly there. For yes. Various times, as long as you you can be sure that the, the hack or the incident is not it won't be necessarily fatal, but it isn't serious for the future of it. Yeah, great op. And I'm going to put your name there because we will revisit this very slide in the future 100% agree names Huss by the way <laughs> oh, oh sorry Huss sorry Huss yeah, of course it is ah I, I can't even type agree <laughs> aggress agree um yes I do know that sorry mate so, yeah um right yeah so Going back to the portfolio, yeah, I think we're pretty safe. Will Town or Zappy get hacked? Well, it, it can't. Everything's been renounced. So there's, you know, they're shit coins, but actually fine. The the contracts have been renounced. Um, so yeah, and the liquidity pools have been burned. All all is good.